Hey folks, um, I wanted to take a few minutes um, to talk to you <laughs> about something that um, some of you guys who know me uh, know that I like to buy really weird random stuff. Um, uh, you know, especially when things come up, people asking about something and what they want to know is, well, do you have personal experience? Well, how can you say something is no good if you don't have personal experience with it? So I decided when I am able to, I will get myself some personal experience with things. Um, so, uh, it's the middle of the day. It's not dark. Uh, it's why I'm here in the garage. It's a little bit darker. I can turn some of the lights off here in a few minutes. Um, and that will let me talk to you about that. That right there, that is the Olight uh, Odin weapon mounted lights. They're rifle, um, you know, long gun light. Um, and uh, I, I've, you know, uh, on a lot of my guns, I've got, you know, stream lights for the most part, um, HLX, uh, the old Protac, Real Mantu, whatever. Um, and they've, they've worked fairly well for me. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of um, really heavy duty work or, or testing with them or anything like that. They, they fit my, my need. Um, I've been pretty satisfied with them. Um, the HLX were pref, uh, preferably with the uh, 18650 uh, batteries in it. Gets me pretty good output and durability and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've got, actually got that right here in my pocket because I'm going to show you some comparisons here in just a minute. Uh, but what I decided to do recently was to, uh, some folks may have seen on my Instagram, um, I've started doing uh, kind of consolidating things. So where I had some, you know, kind of lower tier stuff, I decided I'm going to have one gun. Maybe this might turn into two guns that are just kind of bomb proof. Um, guns that I'm going to spend good money on um, and be guns that I can count on for just about anything. And part of that, um, I have a couple of guns that I think were pretty close to that. This is one of them. Um, but part of uh, that design that I wanted to go for included upgrading the lights. And so uh, on my other uh, Sons of Liberty gun, which I actually have right here, I took the uh, took this exact actual uh, stream light off it, and it will be getting mounted this nice uh, mod light. I've got the uh, weapon mount for it. I also got a handheld body because I won't be able to carry it around if I want to. Um, but one thing that I did want to find out about was this this Olight Odin. You look at the specs, you hear people talk about it on um, online, on Facebook, on YouTube, whatever, and they love it because it's a nice slim body. Uh, it's got really great output. Um, it's 2,000 lumens. I don't recall exactly what the Candela is. Um, and I think, well, geez, you know, 2000 lumens and you know rechargeable battery integrated mount okay let's check it out let's see what it's all about uh so i got it here um came in last week uh i've been kind of fiddling around with it um i'll tell you right up front that i've already emailed olight customer service about returning it and i'm going to tell you why First of all, the integrated mount on it is enormous. You can see how far that sits away from the gun. Um, it's It has a little release mechanism here on the side. You push that in, turn it like that, and the body itself push it. Uh, there we go. The body comes out, so you can do other things with it. now. I assume this is an integrated scout style uh, mounting that you could use. I'm not going to bother. On this mount that they sent, on the bottom side of it is another uh, little slot here. That's one of the reasons I want to return this. One of the other, um, you know, the, this other mounting slot here so you can actually mount this a little bit closer like so, so that's not quite so bad down there, you know, five o'clock position. Uh, the problem with this is, and this may not be a problem with all um, hand guards or rails, whatever you can put on it, but this is my, uh, you know, Daniel Defense 
uh, old FSP handguard that I love. And because it's got quad rail uh, mounting all the way down, uh, 369 and 12, the mount for the Odin, uh, actually, there it goes. It fits a little wonky on there. I don't quite like having it um, on there. It's not horrible, but, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a cable management something here. But that brings me to uh, the, the biggest concern that I have with this. Um, actually, let me talk about the light itself first. So the, the light itself, like I said, it's rated, says it's 2000 lumens. Uh, it's pretty bright. The um, documentation that comes with this does note that there's a power output step down. So at that full 2000 lumens, uh, you get uh, two minutes of output on the, the battery. After that, the output steps down to 500 lumens, and that you get another, I believe, 12 minutes, something like that. It steps down further um, to, I believe, 150 lumens. Someone can, can fact check me on that if you want to. Um, I have the paperwork here. I just don't want to look at it because it's not the most important thing that I want to talk about. Um, and so the fact that it's it claims you know it makes this claim of pushing you know x number of lumens whatever the candela might be lux whatever you want to, to rate uh it does that for a very small window of time um, and then after that you start getting decreases if that thing's going to drop down to 500 lumens then all of a sudden it's getting less output um than just the x300u on my pistol and so you have to start wondering, am I getting, you know, what am I getting for this, for having this much extra, you know, mass that I couldn't get from, you know, an old Surefire Scout, you know, with 600 lumens on it or whatever you happen to have. <clears throat> the TLR1 HL is going to be brighter than this after that step down. Um, as far as durability, um... I don't know. I haven't, you know, beat it up much and I don't plan to because like I said, I'm I'm going to either return it or just pass this off to someone else on tax swap or something like that. Um, because like I am with the stream lights, this might fit someone's, you know, needs that they have. Um, so the mounting here, I don't know if you can tell, but it, it's not very solid. It is moves around quite a bit. Um, this is as tight as it gets. It doesn't get any, um, you know, you, you can tighten the mount itself down, but where the light interfaces with the mount, uh, that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't get any tighter than that. The next thing, and really my biggest issue with this, is going to be the, uh, the cable tail cap interface here. Let's see if we can get that uh, to read a little better. Well, anyway, right there it says lock. It says push to lock. And this is pull to unlock. Now, when I first got it, what I figured was, okay, I'm going to push that in, tighten it down, just kind of, you know, a kind of fairly standard locking collar. But, you know, it uh, it just keeps on spinning and spinning. So there's no actual you know, threaded engagement of this uh, to tighten it down. To release it, uh, basically what you have to do is, like I said, it, it says pull to unlock there. So you pull that little little collar down, moves about, I don't know, a millimeter, maybe even less than that. And then the tail cap comes off. So that's where your, uh, your charging position is. Let's see if I can get that on there. So this is all the magnetic stuff here for the charging. Uh, the tail cap itself also has the, the uh, magnetic attachment. So when this is a little, you know, close to here, it does, you know, it it clips itself back on with the magnet, and then you lock it back in place. You lock it back in place. So for me, the biggest concern that I have there is that there's nothing that holds that in place other than that tiny little bit of 
of uh, locking, okay? So what concerns me is, you know, having the gun up where, you know, if it's in this position, if I, you know, come up to a barricade, happen to run the light along the barricade, you know, what's gonna happen? Right there, I don't know if you can tell, but it's disengaged that light. It's caught on the, the rail, it's the handguard itself. But, the, again, the, the concern I have is the fact that there's nothing that holds that in place um, to keep it from coming off. So if I'm, you know, even just doing this, maybe, you know, accidentally get my finger up on here, go to do a reload, and pop that off as I bring my support hand down, suddenly I've lost functionality of that light. And, you know, one suggestion that I had made to me was put some tape on there, you know, just duct tape that together so it's not going to come off. That would be a great idea, except for the fact that you got to have this clear to connect the magnetic charger. So you can't kind of, you know, permanently or even semi-permanently affix this because you have to be able to take it off in order to charge the light. And as you can see, this. This doesn't take much at all. This is, let's see if I can, what did I do here? All oh, right, oh, I think I broke it. There we go. So that's, that's locked. When it's locked, yeah, pulling on the cable doesn't do anything. I use one finger to bring that right off. It does not take effort at all to get that to pop off. As far as I'm concerned, that is the number one reason why I would never, ever, ever put this on a gun that I intend to use for anything serious. Um, I'm gonna do a little um, kind of just demonstration of what the light looks like. Now, one of the things that we, we talk about a lot with lights is the fact that you're not always gonna just be in complete darkness, right? So you have to overcome photonic barriers. In this case, we've got a really nice one because there's a little bit of sunlight right there that comes in <laughs> through the garage door. It's not, you know, airtight seal inside here. So I'm gonna flip off this overhead light here. I'm gonna show you what this Odin looks like. Um, it's not very far. I'm not claiming that this is a, you know, 500 yard test of how far the light goes. I just wanna give you a comparison of how it looks. I'm gonna show you the O light on the uh, low setting. The let's see, yeah. So the the switch, the uh, the switch here itself is just gives out the full output. If you use this just with the um, the uh, push button, you can get there is a low setting, and then a higher one that you have to you know push in and and hold it and make it click there, but. That's a whole other issue. So uh, I'm going to show you this one and then compare that to the uh, Streamlight. Again, the HLX that I just took off of my other gun, as well as the um, the mod light. So one second, I'll get back. I'm going to turn this light off and then we'll do it. Okay, so got the light off. Again, there's a little bit of backlighting here, uh, a little bit of light coming through, which is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine the light kind of towards that. And then off to the side of the wall so you can get an idea of what the uh, hot spot looks like uh, or what they you know what passes for a hot spot it's very fuzzy very um, not well defined um, spot in the middle there so first off is going to be uh, this is the Odin at the full 2000 quote unquote 2000 lumen um, I should also say that I have not rated this I have not put this in front of a measuring um, you know a light meter to figure out if it actually is 2000, I'm going based solely on what's said in the documentation. So the 2000 at the light there, that's pretty bright. I don't hate that. Okay. Again, like I said, there on the wall, you can see that's the hot spot. Pretty fuzzy, um, not very well defined. That's may not be a huge deal. Um, it does have quite a bit of splash. If I just shine this up into the ceiling, lights up the room fairly well. Okay. So. Comparing that to, this is the uh, Streamlight HLX. Uh, like I said, I've, this one just came off my other Sons of Liberty gun. 
comparatively speaking. So that's that one. Perhaps not quite as bright. Much better uh, hotspot there in the center. Much better, uh, I think, over distance. That's probably going to hold up a lot better for target acquisition, for positive identification, whatever I need to be looking at. Um, again, trying something up to the ceiling gets me pretty good, pretty good light coverage there. Uh, the Streamlight, of course, by comparison, is 1,000 lumens. So whether or not we want to say, you know, this 2,000 lumens is great, this 1,000 lumen may work, but remember that after two minutes, this is going to turn into 500 lumens. And at that point, again, it's going to look like this. This is what the low power looks like. Very warm, very yellow tint to that light. Um, and then the brighter setting there. So, and as I said, I want to compare this again to the mod light also. So again, here's the Odin full power. There's the mod light right there in the middle of it. It does kind of, and I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up very well, but even within the uh, hot spot of the Odin, the mod light cuts right through it. I mean, I can see the, the hot spot of the mod light directly in the center of the Odin. So again, this is the mod light by itself, that really nice, crisp, clear, defined hot spot. Again, this is the PLHV2 um, in a handheld with the 18650 battery. Like I said, I do have the weapon mount for it that I'll be using. Oh, that's all that, but... Um, yeah, so that's just a quick comparison. Very unscientific. Take that for what it's worth. Get this light back on. The, 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 the big thing that I'm telling folks now who are asking me is, while this is um, however many actual lumens and candela, whatever, in this kind of testing, some really basic testing that I've done just outside in actual darkness, the Streamlight HLX is outperforming it. Um, the HLX is a much better mounting interface. The tail caps are interchangeable with better switches on them. Um, they're much more uh, easy to put on any compatible scout mount out there. Um, I have uh, an Arisaka mount. I've got a um, something else. Doesn't matter. Um, but the Olight, the other thing that I'm going to mention about the Olight right now is the fact that even after just that really limited amount of, of light that I was shining there, didn't get to the two minutes, maybe 30 seconds at a time it was on. And this is pretty darn hot to the touch. Um, I don't have one of those fancy little thermometers to tell me exactly how hot it is. But when I had this out the other night um, in the darkness, turned it on for about 30 seconds at a time. And uh, I was actually just testing it, you know, in my hand just to, you know, be able to hold two different lights in my hand at a time and, and, and compare them. And after about 30 seconds, this was just entirely too hot to even put back in my pocket. Um, and I understand that lights get hot. I get it. I know that it's a function of the fact that it's an electronic thing turning energy into light. I get it. This is unreasonable though. The heat that comes off of this after short periods of time is very bad. Um, my sense is probably that the electronics inside here and the battery don't play well together. I know there's some um, you know, talk on the internet about Olight batteries basically exploding and um, destroying themselves. Uh, that has not happened with this one yet. However, I have a feeling that if I were to just turn it on and actually wait for, you know, that output step down from 2,500 to whatever's down below that, I think that I would almost certainly damage everything inside of this light. 
I don't have any faith or confidence in its ability to survive full power usage for any kind of um, extended period of time. And again, also I get, you know, you don't need to always leave your light on forever. Fine, understood. Flashes, figure out what you're looking at, turn it off. Some people want to have the light on the whole time. Um, if you're hunting or whatever and you need to see where that doe went that you shot 200 yards away and you want to have your light on in order to make your way over there to it or to look at, you know, track it in the woods, whatever, this is not, this light is not going to do it. Uh, this is just going to be, I mean, even still, it's, it's awfully warm and it's been off for, you know, a couple of minutes now. By comparison, uh, the mod light does get warm. It's already cool to the touch. I've had it, put it right back into my pocket. Uh, the stream light has the warning on it, I believe. Um, you know, it's got the little, yeah, the little warning right there that this is going to get hot. And it does. It gets hot. But it, it holds up a lot better to it. So those, um, you know, really basic thoughts, uh, first impressions, and almost certainly last impressions of the Odin. Um, so... Again, my biggest concern is that right there. Even if this was the best output light on the market, if it was pushing 8,000 lumens and 52 million candela and was bright as the sun, the fact that I can do that is good enough reason for me to not ever want to buy this thing or recommend it for anybody who's going to do any kind of actual movement or work with one of their guns. I don't trust it for, um, you know, fun guns for plinking guns because that's just not what I'm after these days. If you're looking for a reliable home defense gun, uh, weapon light, this is not it. Imagine coming around the corner, bumping up against the wall and knocking your light off and then you can't work it. So, mod, uh, O-Light, fix this garbage. This is, this is horrible. Um, this is, this is just unacceptable. There's no reason in the world to be having this in the year 2020, as terrible as 2020 has been. This just made it worse. That's it. Um, I hope that some folks got some value out of this and will have some serious thoughts about whether or not they actually want to buy one of these, knowing that this here Streamlight is a better light, a more de dependable light, has a better track record, and costs about $15 less than that. So, think about it. I have made this mistake on your behalf, and don't buy these. Ever. Okay, bye.